How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and today we're going to be talking about the multi-platform launch of Stronghold Kingdoms specifically on iOS devices. So a couple of days ago Stronghold Kingdoms sort of officially launched worldwide on the Apple App Store which means that it's pretty much available to all compatible iOS devices. And I thought what I would do here is just go down a list of some particularly frequent actions and sort of demonstrate what they look like on the PC client running at a standard 1080p resolution, what it looks like on a standard size iPad, and then what it looks like on the smallest iOS screen of all, the screen of the iPhone SE. It's a four inch screen. And I'm just going to direct capture from both of the iOS devices as well as direct capture from my computer. So we're going to be viewing that and I'm going to be talking a little bit over the footage to mention how it goes. So up first, you have to see me sending an attack. So on a PC, it's pretty straightforward. I go ahead and I recruit the troops that I need. I go ahead and find a target on the map, click on it, click the little attack icon in the upper right corner. Go ahead, select my troop formation size, place the troops down. Uh, probably the most detailed, the most precise you're ever going to be when it comes to deploying attacks attacks. Uh, you'll notice later that the iOS device is really, the touch screen just really can't hold a, a candle to how precise you can be with a mouse. So this is probably always going to be the preferable way to send an attack, at least uh, so, or, uh, set up an attack or at least set up an attack that you can save for later deployment. Okay, so for the iPad, here we go. We tap on the icon on the map that we want to attack, in this case a bandit camp, and you can see in the bottom left hand side of the screen, we can tap on icons of the troops we want to deploy. Now you can actually adjust, like once all these troops are selected, you can sort of drag them around to change their adjustment. And there is also a grid option, but it's just so much less precise and I found myself not able to do anything on the iPhone SE at all. So this is the iPad. Once again, we'll, we'll see the iPhone SE after this, uh, but that's how the attack goes. And then you click the little confirm check mark in the bottom right corner and then click go. And that's the iPad attack launch. Okay, so here we are on the iPhone SE and I want to go ahead and I want to select the village first of all make sure it's selected then I go ahead and tap on one of these wolf flares up here uh, and then I click or tap the attack button and then pretty much the same thing you'll notice that this is even more zoomed in than it was on the iPad uh, much more zoomed in than it ever was on the 1080p screen that I that I was using with my computer but as you can see I was able to get the troops down here I go ahead and I can move the archers a little bit so I just selected them and then I dragged them and I sort of did they just fit them into place so it, it's a rudiment entry but it works and it's good enough for I think a lot of attacks but obviously when it comes to aiming stuff like catapults uh, I'm just not I'm just not convinced that this will be good enough to be precise uh, I still believe that you're going to almost have to set these attacks up on the computer on the PC save them and then deploy those formations from your mobile devices I think that's the most realistic solution but it can be done providing you don't have a really really tiny screen like I think it could be done on on an iPad. I just didn't get around to doing it. Okay, next, here we want to place and confirm a part of the castle. So on the PC version, I'm going ahead, setting up these walls. You'll notice it's very precise, very easy. Put down, of course, and um, confirmation's very quick, very responsive, as we have come to know and love. Let's take a look at that on the iPad. Uh, so here we have a castle. We're going to repair it. There's a, a quick repair button. Once you repair it, the uh, repair button automatically goes away. Uh, the toggle button that, re that adjusts the height of the castle. In other words, it uh, allows the castle to flatten out basically so you can see its plan better. Uh, this button by default will reset to the in the high position. I don't know how to best describe that, but it'll always reset to your towers and stuff being at their usual size. So it's, it's a little bit inconvenient, but yeah, basically, every time you want to build something you're going to have to toggle that down so you can see everything uh, i would like to see that changed the other way around or at least remember what the uh previous what, what the player previously used when it came to actually selecting the building that i wanted to build I, I was a little bit rusty with this system it seemed that i tried to select the stone gatehouse but two times in a row i ended up selecting a different tower and it's rather interesting that i did this on the ipad but not on the iphone phone so this was one of those things that I, I managed to get it done uh, I think it was just due to the fact that I was un, not really familiar 
with the system that they use here. So you swipe light, left and right uh, and sort of a carousel of buildings that you can put down and uh, eventually you'll get what you want. And I, I, I just I attribute my clumsiness there to just being unfamiliar with the system rather than it being a bad system. Because as you'll see, as we move over here to the iPhone version of the game, I didn't have any such trouble. I went ahead and uh, selected the village that I needed or I wanted to repair. Unfortunately, I had already repaired all of the villages, so I could only place down additional uh, castle structures. I couldn't actually click the repair button. Not that it matters a whole lot, but as you can see, uh, the castle is up again by default, and then I had to lower it, and this time I was going to try to place some walls. So I, I didn't place walls with the iPad, or uh, well, we did see me place it with the PC. Uh, so this was a little bit of an interesting experiment. I went ahead and placed the wall down, and I actually wanted to drag it out. So you can drag it out. The first one I sort of missed on, but you have to touch those little icons in the, uh, to the far reaches basically of the wall you just drag those out in the directions you want and you'll get this nice little block and it's okay if some of it shows up red it will just not place the wall in that area so it's pretty simple once you get the hang of it but it's still going to take more time than what you would be able to do on the pc but it certainly works and this remember was on a four inch iphone se screen i was able to make a tiny little thing like a wall i was able to place it down and you saw me do exactly that okay Okay, so up next we're going to be placing a village building on the PC version of Stronghold Kingdoms. You simply use the drop down menu for finding a building in the correct tab um, and just click once to place it down and it immediately starts building. In the iPad version of the game, the formula is much the same. First you need to tap on the build icon and then you can select from the various uh, building categories that are available. In my case we went for food once again to place down a brewery. You can scroll around the map as long as you don't touch on the icon you're going to place uh, to move around and then once you have it in position you just click the confirm button and it uh, it basically goes down much as you know much as quickly as it did in the pc version lastly we have the iphone version the iphone s E version right here as you can see the village is very much zoomed in so it's very important that you can actually scroll around and I think the brewery was a sufficiently large building to sort of test this um, didn't really have any trouble placing it down it went down pretty much as smoothly as on both other platforms but just keep in mind that when you're using the iPhone or any really small screen like that you're just going to have to do a whole lot more scrolling than you ever would need to on the, on a 1080p monitor basically when you're you're playing the PC version of the game. Okay, next we're going to be looking at sending merchants here. So in the PC version of the game, you do much as you would normally do. You go to the unit screen and you go ahead and buy the required merchants that you need. Then you go ahead and click on the capital you'd like to trade with. In my case, it's my local parish. And uh, click the trade icon in the upper right corner. And then select from the various categories here. They have drop down menus that you can see all the, the, you know, the trading prices and everything like that. And then you can go ahead and you click sell and the merchants are on their way. In the iPad version of the game, things are much the same. You go to the units category and uh, you scroll all the way to the end to recruit villagers. In my case, I had to free up some villagers in this village. Uh, the popularity had gotten too low. I haven't been maintaining my village presence on this world as well as I should have. Uh, so I had to go ahead and turn off some buildings. Gave me an excellent opportunity to test doing this on the uh, on the iPad and I think it worked out quite well. And here I went ahead and I uh, recruited those merchants. You recruit them simply by tapping on the number below their icon and then I went ahead and turned all the industries back on pretty straightforward uh, then to trade you just tap the capital once again tap the trade icon and here is when we get into a little bit of an interesting situation so uh, to actually adjust what resource you're willing to sell you have to tap on the next resource button uh, I, I personally find this a very clumsy and inefficient way to do it because it requires that you cycle through all the various available resources there are to sell every time you want to sell them in my case I wanted to sell iron but I had to tap twice to get to it uh, and in the process i found myself going around the carousel a couple of times uh, so i think the best alternative to this would be to simply allow the player to tap the wood icon that is currently shown on the screen and then simply open up another menu that would allow them to select from various icons uh, as well as show the amount of that uh, good that's currently in your village and sell it that way so this is most certainly a less informative and clumsier interface uh, for the merchants uh, you're going to get much more 
more information on the PC as well as it's simply going to be faster because you don't have to have to play the, with the carousel and basically click next resource every time you come around to it. So that could be very much improved. Another rather interesting thing that I found out about doing this is that even though I'm in an age in uh, UK World 1 where I'm not supposed to be allowed to sell any of the weapon resources, I was allowed to go ahead and sell them on the mobile version of the game. Apparently that limitation only exists for the PC. So even though I wasn't able to sell pikes on the PC version of the game, uh, on the mobile version I had no problem selling weapons whatsoever. Pikes, bows, whatever whatever you want. Uh, all of these were apparently fair game to sell at the marketplace and that client. So uh, as you can see right there, it says merchants dispatched. Really don't know what else to say. Uh, that's probably something that should be fixed at some point. When it came to the iPhone version of the game, it was much the same as in the iPad version. Uh, I went ahead and got my merchants. They turned to be maxed. I already I just clicked the trade button. We select the resource by going through the resource carousel. And uh, once again, I selected a weapon resource just to sort of demonstrate twice that it was possible to sell weapons uh, when I was not supposed to be able to in this age. And there we go. So moving on to sending monks in the PC version of the game uh, from the units tab, you go ahead and recruit them, click the building you want to send them to. Uh, then you have the simple dialogue here where you select the action you want them to perform, uh, select how many monks you want to send, and then click go to send them to spend the faith and send them on their way. With the iPad version of the game, it took me a couple of tries to actually hit the right button and go to the monk recruiting screen, but eventually I got it done. Once I had recruited my monks, I went ahead and went back to the world screen, uh, tapped on tapped on my parish, tapped the monks, and um, here is an important interface. So this works much like the trading interface does, is where you have the cycle that you have, this carousel you have to cycle through to go through the various uh, monk abilities that you can use on that parish. Once again, I think this would be greatly improved if they simply allowed you to tap on, for example, the icon, and then it would the icon of the action that you're going to perform and then it would open up an entire menu with all the other icons and you could just select the correct action that you want to take. Obviously, this is going to be less of a sticking point uh, than the trading screen was because there are much fewer actions to cycle through in the carousel. But once again, I think it would just be so much more improved. The one positive side here to this change in interface is the fact that by default, it will automatically send as many monks as possible as opposed to the PC version of the game in which it sends uh, or it starts out at by sending one monk at a time you have to always increase it every time you go through that but then you simply toggle through cycle through it until you get your correct action and then you click go and you're done or tap go when it comes to the iPhone version of the game once again things are smaller than on the iPad but not really any less manageable I found there to be little difficulty in setting up the monks once again to send uh, some restoration ability it was relatively straightforward and just about as quick as it was on an iPad. So that was a comparison between the desktop version of Stronghold Kingdoms run on a standard 1080p monitor, the iPad version of Stronghold Kingdoms run on an iPad 2017, and then the very small screen, the 4-inch screen iPhone SE, which is a couple years old at this point. Um, all of them performed very well. I didn't notice any performance issue on any of those three devices. And um, aside from the few minor quirks that I pointed out, I would, I would feel safe in saying that the iOS port of the game holds up very well. Uh, there, ha there are a few downsides to it that I think don't exist on the PC side, and I think most of those can be corrected. Most of those are just simply little quality of life improvements that can be made. I would say the probably the only aspect that really won't change is actually placing down units uh, in terms of you know setting up a, an attack. Uh, I, I just think that's a limitation of the hardware though, and um, there's really not a whole lot that Firefly could do to change it that I can just sort of um, imagine off the top of my head. There might be some system that you could add to it, but who knows. Uh, so anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Thank you very much for watching as always, and I hope to see you next time.